Hey, thanks for coming along to the farewell speech. Nearly. The end is near, but I haven't quite faced the final curtain. As you know, I fell out with that wee Niaf Harvey, the Canadian bint, and the strange ginger boy last week. I think he might be an alien. I'm not quite sure. The aliens really exist. Anyway, I turfed him out of government. It was the right thing for me to do. Possibly the only thing I've ever got right the last 18 months. Unfortunately, though, I sat down with my ego over the weekend and realised that by getting rid of them, I'd crippled my ability to wreak havoc on this country. Almost everybody in the cardboard factory hates me, regardless of which party they're in. So rather than being sensible about it and take it like a man, the Greens went in a huff and told me to go away and boil my heat. So yet again, my adherence to proper values and integrity has cost me dear. As I said, after sitting down with my ego and deciding what's best for me, not the party, nor the people, nor the country, I've come to the realisation that I need to get out before I get pushed, possibly out of a third floor window. I have indeed instructed my lackeys to let the dogs out and have the hangers on fight it out for the scraps that are being left on the table. Of course, I'll be hanging about until the last possible minute in order to make sure that anything that might be pinned on me has been transferred over to the new First Minister. I'm not taking anything like him, like we nippy has. But anyway, as a young boy, when I was born and then raised in Scotland, I could never have dreamed as I ran about wearing hand-me-down bedsheets and dish towels, that one day I would have the privilege of leading my country. People like me, you know, who shared a bed with 15 or 16 cousins and slept in shifts, were not people that became those that, that had political influence, never mind leading governments. But look now, look nowadays, we've got, we've got a dwarf, Liar, the British Prime Minister. We've got a dwarf liar as the Mayor of London. We've got an, a narcissistic vain twat as the the First Minister of Wales. Well, we've always had a narcissistic vain twat as the First Minister of Wales. Anyway, um, and, and while I'm still here, you've still got me as First Minister of this country. You can take your multiculturalism and you can shove it because obviously it does work because we've multicultured you and you've no choice about it. So I've had the honour of serving this government in a number of roles of which I've spectacularly failed at over the last 12 years. Every position I've held has been just beyond my ability. And you know what they say, everybody gets promoted to the point where they're no, no, to the point where they're no longer competent. I'm incredibly proud of myself for being able to uh, squirrel money away and send it out to people that need it. You know, people like um, uh, uh, Palestinians in Gaza, um, even though I don't actually have any remit for foreign aid. But you, you guys don't mind. You don't mind me sending all your money away. I mean, I've got family out there as well. Well, the wife's got family out there and bloody hell. They never stop bleating about it, but hey... So I've no doubt whoever takes over from me will continue to to ruin the SNP. I mean, our dream, to be honest, people, our dream of independence has long died. It died a long time ago, and it's just getting worse. People are hemorrhaging from this party. It's, it's just not going to continue. While I would love a country as rich as ours to be, to be independent and a leader amongst the world, it's never going to happen. I must also remind you that we have continued the great tradition of having the highest drug deaths in Europe and since we introduced minimum unit pricing on alcohol, deaths are up 25%. Another one for the SNP. We're, we're making the economy better by actually reducing the population. I think that seems to be working. This isn't the kind of economics that we Katie would have done if she'd get in, so, you know... You've got, got me to thank for that. So I really hope that as a country, you can be proud of what I've done and what I've done for you because you guys have done nothing for me. You've just mocked me at every turn. And too often, too often, hatred continues, continues to rear its ugly head. And I'm the kind of guy that bears the brunt of that. Not you guys. 
You'd think that with a country that's ninety five point five percent white, you would be a bit more tolerant of the minorities like myself. You know, the absolutely gorgeous. Oh God, I can't go on. Oh Jesus. Oh Allah. Oh I I'm sorry, I can't go on. I've I can't go on with this pish. Yeah, I'm great.